Price is right. The, the price, yeah, literally the price is right. I mean, you know, you know how companies be. Yeah. But it's like I put it out on power, but like they, but this place doesn't own it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I own everything. Okay. So I just kind of put this shit out on the radio on Friday nights. It's just kind of like a, just to kind of like do it. But in terms of like selling it, yeah, we talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Trying to find the right place, find the right home. Yeah, yeah, Cause, yeah. You know, as it gets bigger, you know, you need like more help and shit like that to to manage everything. And I got employees now and all that shit that I gotta figure out so we just trying to figure that that like all that shit out at the same time too yeah yeah man it's good man the price yeah. is right yes sir the price is right but i'm gonna see you later all right bro i want your report huh i want your report i'm here until two today i'm on the radio so oh, gotcha. and then i gotta slide over to the studio got a couple interviews and then got you yeah my last artist of the night so so you got 545 are you coming later too yeah i'm gonna pull up all right but i'm gonna let you have it up that's the dude that owns oh, on the radar. Mark, I'm, you know, I'm a college student. Mm -hmm. College students don't make that type of money. No way. But then I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and drop on it. And I went to LA. I always been fucking with the music. I was doing like little diss tracks on YouTube. <laughs> cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Better wear your Yeezys while you still can. Nope. <laughs> You're not wearing Yeezys anymore. <laughs> What's good, Josh? Your boy DDG. Check out my interview with the Breakfast Club tomorrow. We lit. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Doing a bunch of media today, man. Breakfast no Club was cool. Huh? No PS? We waiting on somebody to come down. Oh, uh, yeah. We just can't have cameras going on. Uh, but yeah, no, nah, we finna go um, Do a bunch of interviews. You know, Breakfast Club was cool. It'd have been better. No, but it's alright. It's all good. We're finna do the next one. Should be lit. With Gary V. So first the project is it is called It's Not Me, It's You. So tell us a little bit about why you chose that name for the project. A bunch of different meanings for it. I would say it's like, you know, based on like relationships that I've been through, you know. Probably just you know just pointing the finger, kind of in a toxic way. What's up, man? Yeah. How are you? Good. Chilling, chilling, chilling. How's New York been? What's yeah. Up, man? Good. 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 How was uh how's New York been? Yeah, I just got here. Well, I was here last night, but I just I ain't do nothing with that. You got stuff tonight? Interviews, regular stuff, promote my album. It's crazy to <laughs> Michael, you happy, huh? It's good to see you, bro. Good to see you too. What's uh what's the biggest thing on your guys' mind right now? Um, what you mean like Like what you're really pondering or like what you want to happen or What's the biggest challenge? Anything kind of? I mean, I'm just promoting my music, honestly. Trying to get it out yeah, there as much as possible. Trying to get it out there as much as possible. Get as much people to listen to it. And what's going on with social content? Like, where are you pounding it? Um, I'm still on YouTube. Mm -hmm, of course, I know that. Everywhere. You know where I'm gonna go next, right? TikTok. No, TikTok. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm on there. How much a day? I ain't on there as much. I know. I saw. <laughs> That's why I'm going there. It, Cause it's. I'll tell you why. One, one TikTok. Change everything that is in your body right now that you want to happen is one fucking TikTok, which is why you gotta go four times a day on it. Mm, four times a day. You that would be like, you sound like me. How I tell people to do YouTube. That's correct. Crazy. That's you know, and YouTube <laughs> Shorts especially because YouTube Shorts now is coming off of TikTok DNA, mm -hmm. and YouTube Shorts is bringing more awareness to your overall YouTube. It's really important, man. Like, yeah, I've seen people go from like zero to a million in like. And bro, you have actual talent. So the only thing that's like not letting you get what you want in your soul is the at bats. So what you what type of content on TikTok shorts? The, the thing that I really tell people in this moment cuz I you know it's funny as you know you probably have seen it. I've had artists come through but like I pretty much have a good sense of who's going to actually do something about it versus who's going to yeah yeah me, give me some daps and go on and not do shit. Mm -hmm. So I was excited that you were coming through cuz I'm like this kid's going to do it. Yeah. I'm do so it. let me give you the answer. What you should do is every down moment now, flights, you know, you're waiting five minutes before your next meeting, just consume the fuck out of TikTok. Because if you're consuming it, 
and then the way you do it, because the way the algorithm shows is if like you're looking at pretty girls, you're just gonna keep getting them, you need to go to search and just type in anything you give a fuck about. Anything. Artists that you like, food, music, sports, TV, just type it in, hit enter, consume, consume, consume. After about a week, you're gonna have a sense of the flavor. Mm. Right, you know how you do like micro shows and like you walk in and a few minutes in, and I don't know how you are as a human, whether it's a few minutes in when you walk in or you need that first song to go off or that first few minutes of this, or few seconds of the song, you got a sense of the vibe. Yeah. And then you'll accordingly adapt to that. Yeah. That's what I want you to do with the content. I need you to like go get the vibe first mm-hmm. and be like, that, you're like, fuck, that works, but I ain't doing that. The reason nobody did TikTok when I was telling everybody to do TikTok was because they were like, I ain't a fucking 14 year old girl, I ain't dancing. And I was like, it's not that, right? Mm-hmm. YouTube started as people ripping off television and putting fucking Family Guy clips on YouTube. Yeah. Shit evolves. Instagram was photographers taking nice photos. Shit evolves. So you need to go in there, capture all the flavor, be like, that's corny, I ain't doing that. Fuck that, I can't do that. But, oh shit, I can do that. Mm-hmm. And then go. It's even happening with my career right now. The green screen, you know like when People are like talking in front of like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. that shit works for me because I got hot takes. Mm. I could take a headline and be like, this is what it means, this is what it means. And that shit's crushing for me. My, I don't even need my own content team anymore. Just take a screenshot of an article, put the green screen on, give them my two cents, and I'm out. So I think, listen. So you post four times a day on TikTok? Yeah, now I have a big ass team, but for the first seven years of my career, I was, po- when I, back in the day, if you came through, when Twitter was popping off in 07, 08, I was tweeting 100 times a day by myself. A hundred times a day? I was going to sleep at four in the morning because I was like, this is it. This is my chance. I don't have the money. No one knows who the fuck I, right? Yeah, those are old classic. Look, tell them how many, give me, look at one and tell me what the date is on it. Seven, 2017. And, and how many likes and comments? It's nothing. Those are small, tiny numbers back then. Yeah. And those are my greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so it was zero and two and three, but with TikTok, one of the biggest reasons people don't go hard is they don't like how many followers they have. They don't feel good. Mm-hmm. They're like, I got more subs on YouTube, right? So it's on some insecurity shit. Fuck that, don't worry about that. Cause you know one fucking post where well, you- You know it was Googling my nephew. I don't know if you've seen him. Mm-mm. Uh, you made a little, you probably Then I definitely see, I just don't know who you wanna kill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, listen, if I, was, if I had the talent that you have, and I know this is how you work, every hook, that came to me, that I wanted to build around, I put that shit into TikTok first. Just the hook. I mean, maybe the rest actual of, song yeah. or just acapella, acapella. Pro, fucking the words even. Just because you know people love bars. Like, people like me, but I don't have the like rhythm or talent musically. But the words I say touch on the same thesis. Mm-hmm. Honestly, whatever the fuck, right? Like if you're in an airport and something hit you heavy, in that moment is when you're most like raw and real about it, if you just say it. If you see 97,000 people go crazy and are just like, that's bars, you're like, fuck it, I'm gonna build around that. Yeah. Whereas, you know, like, like your best ideas came, went, and are gone. Facts. I know, that's why this shit is interesting to me if you, and for an artist, like just get it the fuck out there and your research comes back to you. Look, may you rest in peace, like P and B Rock. Like that was one Kylie Jenner, like two seconds on that song, completely changed the course of his career. One snap back when it wasn't even viral like this. Yeah, that's the truth. I watched his career the whole way. One half a second. Fucking Yachty. Like right? Like we remember yeah. at Arkansas State, one little like the number one opportunity you have, and why I wanted to get a few minutes, so I appreciate it is. You need to be putting out some fucking content on TikTok and YouTube Shorts. And YouTube Shorts, the same shit. Mm-hmm. And that you're gonna like because I know you're fucking deep on YouTube, and it's gonna feed the subs. Subs are gonna just start going. I know. I gotta go. Okay. I do. Sure. Great advice, man. Yeah, please. And I know you'll do something about it. Nah, Let's get yeah. a quick photo. Right. Oh man, it's such a pleasure. Like. Cool. I appreciate pleasure. you, bro. Happy to do it, my man. For real. So he was on Double XL. Um, he's working for Double XL. How you feel about them giving me the temp spot? Ain't the temp spot like a disrespectful spot? Yeah. Yeah. Yes and no. 
And I say yes and no in the sense of the 10th spot being that is voted by the fans and knowing that you have like a huge audience and like fan base, putting you in the 10th spot is kind of like guaranteeing you got the spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So that's why I'm like in a no sense. Because even like the first year you pitched, like you had a really good shot of like winning it. Like I also yeah. think at the end of the day, like they're not gonna put someone in that tenth spot, even if they have like hundred million people voting for them, if like they don't like the artists, you know. Yeah. That's a fact. Like there's never somebody in that tenth spot that's on some like this person we don't believe in them. They're not gonna make the list. Like that never happens. Like I just feel like I should have been on the original pick. I just feel like the 10th spot was just like, it was cool though, you know. I mean, it's still a blessing. Yeah, you know, not even just that. But like, it's just, you know, I feel like the 10th spot was just like, all right, nigga, go ahead. Nah, <laughs> we gonna I, give I you this shit. I promise you it wasn't that. Like, the artists that get that vibe, they don't even get, like, to pitch <laughs> type shit. So, like, it definitely wasn't those vibes. And like I said, with your audience, that 10th spot, like, it was guaranteed, like, so it was more or less like, he's definitely making it this year, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. in, in your case, don't even look at it that way. Oh, yeah. I also think it's kind of like, that your fans get to feel like they had ownership over it too, you know? Yeah, yeah they're part of the process. Mm -hmm. Instead of just like, us in the office. I used to think the votes and shit was fake. Dude, just trying to hype it up type shit, but. Most artists that come to the office feel that way. They feel the whole shit is fake. They feel it's all based off relationships. It's a whole bunch of theories. Wait, but like, this is the question. Like, when you do do like the XXL voting, can't you just bot it? Like every hour, just have the bot click the <laughs> like. Yes and no. And I say no in a sense is because like uh, the audience engagement team, my fuck brother, um, over there is like really on top of social and how social works. So like, anytime that there was weird, because there was a few artists that like we would kind of like. Wait, why are they getting so many like votes? This doesn't make any sense. So like when those kind of things pop up, it becomes clear that there's something working outside of an actual audience. But like for somebody like you, like we knew, like every piece of content you did for Double XL, them shits went up. So like with the voting process, we knew it was like authentic. You know what I mean? But like if it's an artist who has like a small following or a, 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 a following that's not really that engaged and they start boosting numbers, then we're like, yeah, this ain't real kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But people try this shit, though. Yeah, There's a few cool. artists that tried that shit. I always wondered that. I'm like, it's like, come on, bro. Like, it's that easy to just click on it and then have a bot. Just keep